Okay, imagine your client wants a Power App by tomorrow. You sit down, sketch the app, buttons, tables, input fields, you name it, it's ready. But here's the problem. Power Apps is slow when you want things to look good and the only way to go fast is using the default components. And let's be honest, they kinda look like shit. So I was playing around to find a few hacks to build modern apps in minutes. Less clicking, less tweaking and no wasting time. So grab your coffee, here are three hacks to build Power Apps faster than ever. These days, everyone's talking about AI. 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 Yeah, we have Copilot, but it doesn't really work for designing the app. We need something that actually helps. Something that lets us skip the boring design part and jump into the logic. And here's the first big trick. Let AI do the UI for you. I'm serious, tools like v0.dev or bold.new are made for front-end developers to build UIs lightning fast. You just type in what you want and the AI gives you a full design. Okay, and this is where it gets cool. Even if you're building a Power Apps, you can use v0. Here's how. So you probably sketched out your app and wrote down some notes, but let's just imagine that we don't know anything about it. We just know that we want to build a user management system. So these are the steps I would follow to get inspiration and then build it in Power Apps. So the first point is writing down everything we know, but in this case, we just know that it's gonna be a user management app. So the next thing is we will go to ChatGPT and we will tell ChatGPT what to prompt. In this case, we want it to write a prompt for AI how to design the app. Then we will take that prompt and we will go to V0 and we will paste it here. V0 now has a nicer prompt which it can work with and then we will take that design which V0 produces and rebuild it in Power Apps. So let's start with ChatGPT. So I will give it a prompt now. So this is it. I just gave it, can you write a prompt for AI to design a user management apps dashboard? It should be modern and minimal and black and white. So ChatGPT directly starts writing and it says, design a modern and minimal dashboard UI for a user management app. So it just writes the prompt better than I can. And from here on, I copy that prompt and I will go to V0. Now I will paste it in here and I will let V0 work. So just a heads up, the more you know about your app, the more information you have, the better the AI can actually design it. So in this case, we just pretended to know nothing at all. But in your case, it might be that you actually know how the app should look like. You just don't really know how to design it. And here V0 can really help out. So V0 is typing and typing and typing and we will wait. It actually takes about 30 seconds, maybe a minute, and then we will have the finished design. So let's skip this part. All right, and now it's almost done. So we're waiting and here we go. This is the app. We have a nice minimal and clean dashboard of our user management app. We can, we can replace this with our app name. We have a sidebar. We have some buttons, some cards, a gallery, and the cool, th oh, even a tab system, which looks pretty nice. And the cool thing is that we can actually tell V0 to change things, right? So we can really design this app, finish the design, and then take that and build an app afterwards. So now, since the app is designed, unfortunately, there is no way to just go into the code and copy the code and actually make a power app out of it. But this is not the point. We can use it as inspiration to build our own app. Because by knowing what to build and how to put things together that users actually enjoy using the app, we will be much faster and our customer will be more happy. Apps are graphical user interfaces. People don't like reading, we skim, we want visuals, we want icons. You've heard the phrase, a picture is worth a thousand words. Well, most Power Apps look like they're worth zero. The problem? Adding custom icons in Power Apps is hell. You know the pain. Search for an icon, copy the SVG, convert double quotes to single quotes, inject it in an image component, add the SVG prefix string, then try changing colors. No thanks. Here's a better way, powericons.dev. Go there, click any icon, it automatically automatically copies YAML code that's ready to paste into Power Apps. Done! You get the image component with the SVG preloaded and styled. Even better, you can import your own SVGs, edit the colors, export the YAML code or download as PNG, and you can toggle between image only and clickable. What clickable means is that you have a custom icon, but the cursor interacts with it like with a default icon of Power Apps, making the cursor change into a hand. And on the long run, this will save you hours. All right, so this last hack is kind of underrated, but it's probably the one saving me the most time. So don't zone out, this one's powerful. In 2024, Microsoft quietly added this feature to Power Apps. You can now copy any component's YAML code. We all know the traditional component feature, but this is different. It's actually full on YAML code exports. Here's what you do. Right click the component, click copy code, paste it into Notion, Google Docs, whatever, and boom, you just saved a reusable component forever. And the next time you're building your app, you just open your library, copy the YAML code, paste it into Power Apps. 
You can build your own UI library, just like usual developers do. App shells, forms, buttons, cards, whole templates. And here's the best part. To make this even easier, I built a free component library for you. Nine components and all styled like the Shetson UI design system. All right, and here's how to use it. So first of all, some of you might be wondering, what's that Shetson UI library? And to make it short, it's just a component library for React, but I think they have some really nice and minimal components, and that's why I rebuilt some of them in Power Apps. So let's go to V0, let's give it a prompt. So I skipped the whole prompting and coding part, but here's the prompt I gave it. Please build a user management app, but only include Shetson UI library. So it should only include the components from the Shetson UI library, and then make it white, include buttons, a tab bar, drop downs, accordion, motto, toast. Because those are some of those components I have in the free component library. So it gave us this app. We have a tab bar here. We have some nice looking cards. We have there the buttons, another card here. So some kind of pop-up as well. If we press on one of those names, an accordion opens so we can we can go through the information like this. All right, it's a very simple looking app. We could definitely include some more stuff like a sidebar and maybe some more information, but for now it's totally fine. And now the question, how could we use the free component library to rebuild parts of this app? So if you download the component library, you will get text files and screenshots of the components. And to show you guys how this looks like, you will basically have different kinds of text files like this. This is basically the YAML code, which gives Power Apps the information of how the component should look like. So this is, for example, a button. We have an accordion like this as well. So everything is in there already. So you just have to copy that text file. You go to Power Apps, and when you're in Power Apps, you just right click, paste, and press paste code. So it will paste the component into your app. And here we've got the accordion, so we can, we can switch through these boxes like this. We have animated arrow icons. It looks pretty similar to the one which uh, we have here in the library, in the Shetson UI library. So we have this one here, that's, that's, the, that's the one Shetson has. That's the one from the UI library and the one for Power Apps looks pretty similar. So we can use an, a, a component like this. We can, we can make it, we can make it wider. So it looks similar to the one which we have in the app here but we can also get a tab bar like this. If we like this tab bar, um, we can go in here, we can go to the tab bar, we can copy the code, we go back to our app and we just paste the tab bar in here. So we have a similar looking, looking tab bar. The good thing about these components is that all the information, how they are built is in this is in the tree view. So you can easily add new things to them. You can change the colors, you can change basically anything because all the information is still there. So you can you can just change whatever you want. You can take out a button if you like for a tab bar that doesn't really make sense. So what else have we got? We've got the buttons, we have cards like these. So we can, or, or this one. So we can go to our component library. We go to card, we, it's this kind of card. So we press on copy, we go to power apps and we paste it and here we've got the card. So. I don't want to rebuild the app right now. I just want to show you how it could be done. But let me just take out these components one more time and just show you what else is there. So we have, we've have we got the accordion, which we've looked at already. We've got buttons, which look like this. These are pretty simple. We've got a nice outline button. Let me show you this one as well. So if you press, the, uh, if you paste this in here, it's a nice looking outline button. And the good thing about this, those are still the classical components. So those are not the modern components of Power Apps because I've read that some people still have issues with the modern components. So I wanted to stick to the classical components, but I made them look a bit better. So that's a, a that's a secondary outline button. Then we've got, we've got more complex parts like a pop-up model, for example. So we can copy the code. We go to Power Apps, we paste it. And if we press on this button, we can get this pop-up pop up model. And we've even got other components, like another pop-up. So we copy this and paste it here. If we press on this button, you can see that we've got this small pop-up coming here at the bottom right. And the buttons, you can, you can delete those buttons because those are just setting a variable to true. So in this case, it's this var toast variable, which is set to true, but you can define the variable at any other place in the app so you can basically control the pop-up with the variable and since the variable can be set anywhere you can you can do it from anywhere as well you don't need those buttons necessarily but just to paste it into the app it just makes sense to have those buttons we have 
a nice looking input field and we have these button drop downs. So let me also show these. So if we press on edit, we have this drop down card opening with more buttons. So yeah, that's a nice looking drop down compared to those classical drop downs which PowerHaps has. Of course, all the components have their limits at some points, but for simple functionality, they might make your app look a bit better. So yeah, so grab the free library, the link is in the description. And that's it, three hacks to build power apps faster and cleaner without losing your mind. Let AI do the layout, use PowerIcons.dev for SVGs and build your own reusable YAML library. If you like this video, hit the like button and subscribe if you want. And let me know in the comments which hack was your favorite or if you've got your own I should try. Catch you in the next video.